Well, so a warm welcome for you, and thank you for joining me. Let me introduce a little myself and my presentation. I'm Adam Biro, and I'm uh, working for Tissan Group Presta as a software test engineer, and yeah, as a team leader also with a lot of separated team splits and responsibility splits. And uh, yes, I started to work at Tissan Group Presta since the beginning of 2010. And uh, in that year, we started to build up something, which now a uh, really major achievement, let's say. Um, with that company, OK, the main profile is the uh, electronic power at the steering. And we try to cover that horizontal competency from the, also from the hardware development to the end of the um, safety critical software testing also. Yes, and um, yeah, we, now we are reached it and we are fully covered that. And it's also thanks to for a fully automated software testing environment, which but we build it up, but we build up and we are really proud of it. And this presentation will be about that uh, framework. And I'm going to explain how to build up a fully automated software testing framework in a step-by-step -step approach in order to ensure that we get instant benefit based on from our investment, our effort. Um, maybe from the middle you won't able to read it, but read it, but I will I will emphasize the key points from the slides, I promise. Um, I'm understand the fully I this I uh, yeah, if I, def I define a fully automated system which is based on four pillars. The first pillar is test execution. It will execute the test. The second one is um, it, it analyzes the results. And based on that results, according to that result, it gives a verdict. We also need always a verdict. And after, if we have those verdicts, we need uh, reports and somehow this system will store those, those reports. So these are the four, four pillars. Um, yeah, it's hard to build up a system if the first step is that you buy a lot of off-the-shelf products and you also try to do your own and somehow you try to integrate it together. But uh, based on my empirical stuff, it, this journey, five years or a little more, if you'd like to have a really, a, a really working system, which is execute those tests. And uh, yeah, I try to show you another way how, how to do it. Yes, of course, in a step-by-step -step order. I have just three bullet points, so let's jump into the deep. I define a a workflow as follows. We need layers. The first layer, of course, always the input. And we always need, of course, a software to test. So the first step is, is a software. The second one is an input documentation, so-called requirements. And we also need to have that automated test environment. If we have those, then we are able, based on those requirements, according to those requirements, we are able to build up, we are able to create test designs, and corresponding to those test designs, we are able to develop scripts. And uh, these scripts will be identical with test cases. If we have everything to cook, then we are try to execute these test scripts in that system, in that fully automated test environment. And after that, there will be oceans of test logs fresh from the oven, and we need to analyze those. And if we have Test oceans of test results. That's equal with that. We have also bugs or faults or failures, and we need to report those. So we need to have a, let's say, ticket or issue management system, a Jira or I don't know, quality center or something like that. We don't have any. We have our internal own, but this is another way. Yeah. So that's what I called workflow. After, if we have that workflow, then we, are, we need to question ourselves, okay, but where is the test automation stuff, stuff in it? 
Yeah, at, at the initial first step is that we need a lab, a small lab. Okay, I mean, lab sometimes is equal with computers, but I mean, we also need a test branch, a test branch or a software agile, a semi-virtual hardware in the loop measurement stuff for so an agile. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's why I call it lab, not just computers, because we are we would like to test in existing products and in semi-virtual products also. After, if we have those, then we also need to unify these equipment. We also need to have a hardware template, because just imagine that if, if you execute a test in a hardware in the loop system, then uh, there will be a result. And you try the, that test in another HIL, and there will be a different result. Then are you able to decide that this difference is based on the HILs or based on something buggy. So no, we need to unify the measurement, the equipment, the equipment. Yeah, so we have now, we have a playground. We are able to do the testing, but how? It, you know, okay, everyone thinks that if, if something went wrong, the testers will fix it in that lab. But we know that it's not true. It's, okay, we are able to fix it, but it's a lot of time. I mean, just imagine that if, if there will be a new, new ECU revision, a new electrical control unit variant, or a new microcontroller unit, or something went wrong with the, with the equipment, then are we need to build it up? Are we need to reinstall it? Particularly, yes, but I think we need a, a responsibility split from a team, and they need to do that, and this is the infrastructural team. The next thing is the automation team, which is also need to be emphasized. Um, a, few, a few years back there was a, okay, the tautology is that a tester found a defect, that's all. And after that, that tester uh, reported that finding into a change management system or a defect report system, and uh, after that a developer is arised or appeared and uh, ask the tester to try to reproduce it together because they don't find that miss much behavior. And they tried it at first time, and yeah, the fault wasn't there. <laughs> so they tried it in the second time. But you know, if you tried it in a second in, in a initial system, then you need to reinstrumentate things, make new failure injection points, try, to new, try a new config, so it's not a minute. So they tried it in second time, and yes, there was nothing, silence. So after a big brief, they tried it last time, and yes, from, but based on our divider, and then there it was, there it was the finding. So with that information, the de developer went back to his desk, and the, the tester also st started to do something strange. He opened the notepad and started to write something. And okay, this tester is, you know, a typical anti-ideocratic -ideoc character who is, uh, the old dog from the field who is, couldn't wait to go home, take his car apart, and then build it up again in a better way. So that, that tester, that full engineer tester, started to write something codish thing. So I joined him and asked, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I'm just scripting a Python code or Python code-ish. You must be joking. And no, no, and she said that, no, 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 I, there, here was the programmer, he started to re-execute the test three times for a long time and I, I'd hate it. And I, I don't want to do this again, I just don't feel like it. And yes, that, that was a message that I didn't want to hear, but he saw that and he looked deep into my eyes and said something test management based thing that we are able to spare a lot of time with it. And yeah, this is, the, this is the key point, that we are able to spare a lot of time with it. So based on that, I hired more information technology engineers and a lot of electrical engineers with uh, extended advanced programming knowledge. And based on that, an automation team is appeared. And you know, these guys are build up the functions. I mean, if we'd like to measure an internal signal or, or check a qualifier, then we need to do a 
typical unified function for it, and after we will, with, with this step-by-step -step approach, we are able to build up a really big library. But we need to use it, we need to manage it. And the infrastructure team is, okay, they are do the, the hardware maintenance part, but the IT machine team do the software maintenance part, so it's uh, with a common sense, yeah. After that, the fifth thing is the test design. We need, always need test design. Because, okay, there was a requirement a few years back, few years back, there was a requirement about a micro, microcontroller unit. And it was about, we are able to refresh a microcontroller maximum 100 times and no more. That was the requirement. We are able to cover it with some tests. So I, uh, a software tester tried to cover that requirement with a new test and, they, and he built it up something build up something and yes, it, there was a PEST, there was a test, he covered that with a PEST. So everybody was happy. And it was just, an execution time was two hours. So he said, yeah, it's pretty cool. But after we tried to do another test on that MCU and we saw that, okay, it doesn't working. Because that guy reflashed a hundred times that MCU, that microcontroller unit, and when I saw that, I. Okay, I fold back a face palm with a, yep, and uh, I ask him, mm, there is another way if he, if he modify just the counter with a minute and 200 and try it and it wasn't easier. And he said that, okay, maybe it's that, yeah, it will be easier and it was just a minute. We execute the test and it was just a minute, not two hours, just a minute. So based on that, two life lessons. At first, the infrastructure guys, didn't like the, don't like if we ruin their little treasures. And the other is the, which is more important, we need test design, because we need to write down the test steps, the failure injection points, and also the use metrics. And based on that, there will be a design. After that, there was stable-ish test executions. I mean, yeah, there was the oceans of test logs. But we, we found that we are able to do night runs. We are able to execute those tests where we won't working or try to won't work. So we, we figure out how to do a night run. But before that, we made a step back because, uh, yeah, now we have a really expensive equipment and a really expensive lab. And we also need to, don't forget, or. It's, it has a higher priority, the lives of people. So that's why I mentioned that safety is another thing that we need to, don't forget, do not. Test engineers, yeah. The other thing is that we need another human race. It's called test engineers, because yeah, we need somebody who is an engineer, but they are also need soft skills. And these are not the best puzzles next to us. So, I mean, you know that thing when you find something, you are testing and find something based on three hours work, and after you join to a developer and try to discuss it, okay, this component went wrong, but he worked on more than three weeks on it. So, you know that, you know that um, on child effect when they are try to save their components. So it's a hard, we need soft case to do that. So these are the test engineers. After, if we have everything, then, it, will, then it, it can be stable to do this execution part. But if, we try, if we'd like to keep that level, then we need a stable supplier management. And if we have those, then we are able to grow up somehow, and these metrics will be the key to grow up and have and want, win new projects, and uh, based on those new projects, new investments. So these are the competencies that I'd like to emphasize for you with that slide. After, if we have this, then okay, but it was the theoretical part, but, but how we do it, how we build it up? Yeah, uh, I have three, there is three columns. First at milestones, it, these are in a chronological level. And yeah, there is the, that it takes more than five years. And also there is an activity column and a motivation column. 
activity is what we are doing and motivation is why we are doing. Oh, yep. The first thing is we'd like to reduce the test initialization. And based on that, we are able to uh, operate a test environment by scripts. So this, this is the first step that we need to do. We need to reach the environment by scripts. After, we'd like to decrease the monotonous repetitive tasks. And based on that, we are, can reach a next level, which, is a stable, uh, which can be a stable automatic test execution. It means that I try to execute something, and, I, I, and there will be something. This is a stable execution. After that, of course, we need pre-processing tests. I mean, if there be a background information, then somehow we need to analyze that to find out was there something, is there something went wrong or not, or everything is right. If we reach that, then we, the next step will be that we need to know the time, the testing time, to be predictable. So for that, we do a new function. It's called self-recovery. If something went wrong, I mean, OK, not, not green and red, but error, so a yellow or another color from the rainbow, then then we need to skip it and do another test case. But because I think you get that feeling when you have a queue with a thousand test cases, but the third one is went to an error and everything is stopped. But we need to jump out, try again somehow, and after jump over and try another test case. So we made it up. After we try to increase the test capacity, with capacity, which means that there there is always gaps. And in those gaps, there is the treasures that we, we need to cover somehow. There is the time that we need. So that's why we have a test scheduler. And based on that, we are able to do the usage statistic. And with that level, we reach the 24 per 7 now. You know that night runs. After that, we need to handle that oceans of test logs. And with that, we need to do pre-process -pro or post-processing steps and give a verdict, give another layer for that background information. And for those, we, there will be test results that we are able to reach. And this is the last layer somewhere, we are somewhere here at this Senkru Presta uh, to, many, to reach the management system somehow with that, with that uh, environment and after use it company-wise and after there will be the test factory. So this is my last sentence about the presentation. Step-by-step um, -step approach and this transparency that I opened is guarantees the return of the effort. So step-by-step -step approach, based on step-by-step -step approach, we are able to eat that elephant like these environments. Thank you, and uh, I'm open for questions. How do you manage versioning changes in test environment components? Do you version control of the test environment beside the software under test? We are use, using an um, external version control system, which is called Subversion, and uh, we automated that part. So fully automated everything with SVN. Based on hooks, it means that the, also the commit way, and based on the, yeah, the new versions, we also, yeah. We made build, builds, and based on that builds, we have new versions from that environment, if it's an answer. These per testers are working together in an open office, and they are, they are working based on a testing uh, pyramid, or let's say, truster triangle. At first, there is a level which test executors, another with test verificators, and there is, a, there is upper levels with more empirical, like, and there, there are the test implementators and designers. And next to this pyramid, there is two pillars. One is, the, is a management part, management stuff, and the other part is the test automation with a, with a separated team, team responsible split. split. How you are, re, are checking if the failed test is in fact failed because of bug in the code, not because of the environment. Yeah, we have, we have a, a really cool thing which called tool chain validation. So if something went wrong and we modified something in the test environment, then we need to execute uh, our own test based. So we are testing our own testing system, of course, that based on that we are able to decide is if something is red or green, then 
then it's really green or red. Is it worth to automate it test in case where manual testing is fast and easy and automation is very complex? But I have a longer answer. Really no. Because, uh, yeah, we have chillions of test cases, not just, system, not just in system test levels, but yeah, forget unit testing, so un over unit testing. Yes, on that level we also have chillions, but after that we also have, and you know, manual testing, I mean, we test gate, gate driver units, and we are testing internal signals, and we are testing a, yeah, a pretty, a pretty complex safety critical system, and we have, of course, we have manual tests, but not in that level. When when there is a, a really existing product, then we, we we try those. But before that, there is a, you know, if we found a bug before, we put it into a car, then it's cheaper. So there is a really big team to cover that with automation.